And so we're going to get close to wrapping up here by talking about the disadvantages of investing in a mobile home community. So the burdens of home replacement. So it talks about the, the most significant change in the mobile home industry over the last 20 years from a community owner's perspective is in the manner in which new homes are brought to the community. Okay, well, you know, well, let me just read what he says and I'll give you my insights. So the end, the, in the event that there is an existing empty lot or a vacancy developed, the capital expense of purchasing new mobile homes or refurbishing existing units is often shifted from the lot renter to the owner of the community. The number one thing that requires additional capital to this industry uh, and that changed the business model was the need for owner operator of parks to fill lots or rehab the homes in the park themselves with their own balance sheet. So this can be challenging. This can be challenging. Ideally, you'll buy a, a mobile home park that's 100% occupied of, of a resident owned homes. It's not always the case. So we've bought parks and we have vacant homes, some we have to rehab and some, the expense, it's not worth it. Like we just gotta get them out of there. That, uh, that costs money, right? And so we have to do that. Some of the homes that we've renovated, we thought we could renovate for five or 10 grand, we spent 15 and 20 grand, right? And so there hasn't been, um, and we're not selling the, we're not fixing these houses up, you know, investing 20,000 in them to sell them at 40 or 50. Like literally, I think we spent 20 grand fixing, you know, one home up and I think we, we sold it for 23,000, you know, really, but why, that, that's fine. Actually, we're really happy with that. We sell these things on owner finance notes on some of them, 10% uh, uh, interest, but what do we want? We just want the lot rent. Heck, we've given away some homes for like, hey, you can have this home, you gotta take care of it, you gotta skirt it, you gotta keep the grounds, abide by all the park rules, pay your lot rent on time, it's all yours. And we're, we're, really, we're really fine with that. Now, one thing I didn't mention earlier that has really helped this problem with felling lots is that 21st century mortgage has what is called a cash, uh, cash program. So the cash program basically is like, if you apply for it, this is an incredible program, we're, we're doing it at now one, uh, soon to be, no, two already and about to be a third park. And what we're doing is we're getting approved uh, for financing from 21st Century Mortgage. We get approved, we say, hey, we need a house, we need five houses. We're about to order three to five houses on our, our latest development, our subdivision uh, park that we own because we've got quite a few lots to fill. So we're going to contact 21st century mortgage we're going to apply we're going to get approved they're going to come bring in three brand new mobile homes and and then from there although we have a loan with them we don't pay a dime for a year okay we don't make any payments we don't have anything like that for 12 months so it gives us along with 21st century mortgage who's going to help us market and sell those properties to an end buyer we find it in buyer, they get approved 21st century mortgage, finances them, we get our lot rent, they get you know their mortgage payments and the homeowner gets their home, brand new home. So that has really uh, helped in, in, in this area. Um, let's see here, so increase, another thing that we've done also in, in one of our, our most recent development is we have uh, private lenders who are investing, you know, say for example, $50,000. They're investing $50,000 and we're giving them uh, a lien, obviously a first lien on that specific lot. And these are, for example, half acre lots. So they're getting a lien, they're, they're investing with us, they're getting a uh, first lien secured by that real estate, secured by that dirt. We're using that money to buy a used mobile home bringing in, setting it, you know, painting, flooring, carpeting, skirting, fixing it up, selling it via owner financing to a resident for, you know, 50 to $60,000. And these are newer homes, nicer homes on a half acre lot. So we're selling these at 50 to $60,000, 10% interest. And we're also giving that same lender, not only are we giving them a lien on the property, right? Secured by the real estate, but we're also giving them uh, we're collateralizing that note 
uh, by giving them uh, that note that we have for owner finance borrower uh, for the actual home at 10% interest. So in, in, in the event that we are default or anything like that, just as added security. So that's really turned into a big eye opener for me, how great an opportunity this can be for our private lenders who are investing with us. I didn't really realize that aspect of it is what we're doing. We just kind of stumbled upon that, but we have been able to uh, finance um, uh, our parks with private money and one uh, thus far. And we did have one of our parks with seller financing that the seller gave us 5% interest for three years. And um, he loves us because we make our payments on time and he saw the improvements that we're doing. He's like, man, you guys are good. I'm, I'm so happy to see the park getting the, the attention and the improvements that it needed. All right. So let's get back to the disadvantages of investing in a mobile home community uncooperative uh, municipalities. So he talks about uh, mobile home communities are often subject to challenges from their local municipalities, can be true. Um, so you definitely, that's a big part of the due diligence that we do in that due diligence checklist I mentioned earlier. Um, it's critical for investors to grasp the zoning regulations and general attitude, general attitude towards mobile home communities in the municipality where they're investing. And particularly says that investors need to understand the difference between mobile home communities that are conforming and those that are non-conforming, right? And so what that means is basically, if you're in, a, in an area or state that requires your home, your park to be licensed, you better don't well make sure that it's licensed. We're in a contract on one right now and it's been licensed, but the license is expired. Uh, the owner says that he didn't know about it. And now it just expired earlier this year. It's 190 bucks to get it re um, licensed. But we are um, going to meet with city hall and city planners. We're going to meet with police department. We're going to meet with all kinds of folks who work there, live there to kind of get the pulse and feel. And that, like he said, the attitude of the, the community and of the, uh, uh, the government, really. And let's see here. So basically conforming and non-conforming. Conforming means property is legally zoned and currently operating as a mobile home community. There may be not, it may be a non-conforming property, meaning that, hey, whenever they've kind of grandfathered it in, but if you buy it, that ownership changes, they may not allow it. So you have to do your due diligence here. You just have to, okay? Another disadvantage, he says, is increased research and due diligence. You know, absolutely, 100%. That's why I've created kind of this very extremely long checklist just to make sure ever we have everything accounted for that we need to do when analyzing these things. But he talks about a lot of the, um, the challenges come from working with mom and pop owners, right? So thus far, all of our um, sellers have been mom and pop owners. And they don't always have the best books in the world. To be honest, they, some of them, you know, I don't even know if they knew what QuickBooks were. And, I, and I'm not trying to make a joke here. I mean, the second park that we bought was from, you know, elderly couple. And I mean, it had everything was in, in a notebook. And it was, it was a lot of work and a lot of challenges trying to figure out, um, what these financials look like. And it was a little bit scary. So you just got to spend a lot of time asking a lot of questions, spending time at the park, creating your own, uh, your, your spreadsheets and, and, and going through things and kind of working through things very methodically and meticulously. Um, just, just to, just to be honest with you. Um, there's no leases a lot of times. I mean, he talks about that in here. There's not any records. I mean, we just bought a, this, this community and there's no leases at all whatsoever. So we had to go in as soon as we purchased part, create leases, um, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, he talks about, um, Frank talks about that, um, you know, when you ask, can I see your financials? It's basically a spiral notebook with numbers written in purple crayon, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so let's talk about, let's wrap this up here. We'll talk about the disadvantage. Cult, it, he talks about one of the disadvantages is culture shock. So mobile home communities are different than most other real estate asset classes that a typical investor may consider. Um, the average American never even goes into a mobile home park. And, you know, it, it, there's a lot of hardship that you're going to see and experience 
and a lot of investors just they're not either comfortable with it um you know or just don't know how to navigate through that and um i've got a heart for for these people in these communities i uh you know i was raised kind of pretty solid middle class income but you know we went through a period of time for a couple of years where you know my my father lost employment we lost our home all those types of things and we we, we struggled and so you know there's it's okay you know there's nothing wrong with being lower class like there's not 100 percent nothing wrong with that and and we tell our people in our communities you know uh we tell it in a number of different ways, but, you know, I, I made a po uh, Facebook post, for example, talking about, you know, what we're trying to do, you know, very uh, safe, clean communities with high standards of the quality of people that are there. And we understand there can be lower incomes, there can be wrong with being poor, being lower income, but you just can't be poor and dirty in our communities, right? So we hold people to a standard of how they're going to keep their lots, how they're going to behave, all those types of things. And because we think that's what people want, right? A good, safe, a wholesome community. And um, so the culture shock thing is for me, it's just something that, that I embrace and um, it hasn't always been easy. Like we've had some riffraff, we've had some meth heads, we've had some drug dealers, we've had some bad people in our communities. And, you know, you got to navigate through that. Because they they can overrun and take your part down, and some getting some of these people out wasn't easy, but it was absolutely necessary. And we were uh, think thanked you know multiple 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 times, and um, still are to this day. People are grateful because they see what we're doing, what we're trying to create, and they're and they're buying in. And uh, so it's a good thing. 